have uh, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Chilekwa and uh, Mr. Chanoda Ngwira. So we would like to hear uh, their views about what's happening in the country. And uh, I'll start with uh, uh, Mr. Ngwira. Mr. Ngwira, please uh, tell us your, your name and what you are doing. And uh, then uh, we'll come to Mr. Chilekwa. He's going to tell us his name, his full names, and what he's doing. And uh, then we'll go into our discussion. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Phil, for this opportunity. One thank you. Uh, Directors there that are this uh, program. Names are Your audio uh, is too low. If you can put up the audio a little bit oh. more. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, correct. Yeah, so I was saying I want to appreciate uh, this program, uh, the anchors and uh, uh, listener and afterwards. My name is uh, Chad Wira. That's the coming. Uh, that is uh, Zang. I am a public politician. They are about four minutes. Consult in uh, our main us We are also dealing with immigration, finance, and everything. But yeah, so I may not talk much about time, but basically, that is me. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, just uh, for some of these, uh, for the some of the Americans who would like to travel to Zambia for tourism, uh, this is the man you'll be talking to. Okay, he's uh, he knows where all the animals are, which uh, people wants to see. The Americans may want to see, and uh, where to lodge and all those things. So this is the man you are going to be contacting, uh, uh, Mr. Nguira. So let me bring in um, Mr. Chilekwa and uh, let him introduce himself and then we'll be on with our program. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you, uh, Director. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and being afforded the chance to um, express um, or interact with the world on what is happening uh, in our country. You know, no country is an island. We are all inter interlinked. There is no country which is a landlocked. Now we are living in one world where whatever is happening anywhere else concerns everybody and affects everybody. Um, what I do is uh, I'm an entrepreneur, a consultant in uh, various other aspects. Um, but my greatest linkage or alignment uh, is basically business development in different faculties. Uh, I've got a passion uh, for a clean environment and uh, my business ideas around that. Um, I'm also uh, getting involved in um, real estate development uh, massively. Uh, that is the humane <clears throat> uh, or affordable uh, housing uh, that also encompasses um, issues to do with the uh, agriculture or aquaculture. Uh, we are also embracing greenhouse farming. Uh, we're getting uh, uh, various other global technologies, both in terms of real estate and uh, agriculture and automobile. In a nutshell, that is what I can say. Thank you, Mr. Chilekwa. And uh, I appreciate your presence here and uh, the world is listening to you. Um, so for those of us who who are into green environment, those, some of our viewers in the, in the United States who are into green environment, they want to conserve the earth, uh, the person you be the, the right person you can be contacting in Zambia will be uh, Mr. Chilekwa. 
you know. So let's get to our program. We would like to talk about uh, what is happening in the country. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem here is that uh, people went to vote, but they had a different picture of what they thought they were voting for. They were voting for change. I know that even some even uh, men of God, pastors, uh, business people, or uh, small entrepreneurs, or uh, street vendors, marketeers, uh, all walks of life, they had a, a certain ex expectation. They were expecting that uh, we should change the government so that we can get this. And uh, the people of Zambia went to the polls on August 12, 2020. And what they voted for is different from what they are getting. So there is a lot of uh, dissatisfaction in the country across the board. There is a lot of dissatisfaction in the country because what is happening, what they are getting is different from what they expected when they went to the polls. I know that I remember there was one person that went to the polls in a graduation mm -hmm. gown from the, yeah. from the University of, of Zambia. So they went in with a graduation gown. So they were voting, expecting to get a job. Ooh. And other people were going to the polls, voting, expecting to have some youth empowerment. Some women were voting to get some office jobs. And other people were voting to get some small loans, marketeers to, they call it chilimba, back there in, in Southern Africa. They call it chilimba. I don't know how I can say it in English here. It's like a, a, a revolving fund, something like a revolving fund, you see? So, so, so many people had different expectations when they went to the polls. But what they got is completely different from what they expected. So I would like to start with Mr. Nguira. Tell us what yeah. you think and what's going on over there. Yeah, indeed. Thank you so much. Um, I must say uh, that uh, our expectations as Zambia as uh, always mm -hmm. had, that what our patients are to campaigns. Your audio is cutting off. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, so what I was saying is, uh, as Africans, Zambia in particular, mm -hmm. we are so expecting certain things to be happening uh, once we elect these, our leaders. However, it becomes the point to realize that uh, what they are promising is not something that they are doing. Actually, most, most of them do divert what they promise and they do other things that actually not even concern, you know, people of Zambia and also the people of uh, the people. The people's. And to be honest, uh, just today, during our Nchuala ceremony, we are told that uh, the opposition but the patriotic front was dismissed uh, from the ceremony. A ceremony that is supposed to unite the peoples of uh, the peoples of, of all tribes in this country. Please, can uh, you repeat Nchuala, yourself? Can you repeat yourself? The audio is very is cutting off. All right, uh, let me try to remove it. Says maybe. Uh, we are we are we are having a hard time to hear you. 
hear me now. Right, stay where you are. Okay. Oh God. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Right, stay there. I was saying, uh, it's quite an, uh, our politicians they vet what they the the experts. I was saying just today at Kuala in the eastern part of this country, uh, opposition patriotic front leaders attached by state police claiming that uh, they leave the ceremony. And so one wonders to say, where are we going as a country? Because uh, a ceremony like in Tuala is supposed to unite all the indigenous so let, 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 let me, Mr. Nguira, let me cut you short a little bit. So what you are saying is that uh, the opposition politicians in the country, they went to attend this traditional ceremony in Ntuala, and they were removed by the state police. Is that what you are saying? Precisely, precisely, precisely. They were so what, honorable given president of the Patriotic Front was ordered to the arena just before the president, His Excellency, Mr. Haka, in the uh, uh, arena. So they were chased. So, so the, the opposition uh, leader was removed from the Nchuala ceremony when the president arrived. Exactly. He was removed. Immediately, the, the president was uh, coming into the arena. Uh, the police state, say the state police, Honorable Given Rubinda, the Act General, Mr. Chilangwa, and there to leave the arena immediately. Oh, that's not fair. So this is what I'm saying to say look, uh, we must not take politics of traditional ceremonies because Paramount Chief present is not just a chief for a particular father, he's not just a chief of the UPN team. He's a chief MMD members, a chief of uh, PF members, MD members, in short, a diverse politician are still under his leadership. Take politics to a situation like that. Then are we going as a country? Where are we going as a country? So this, I think this is a problem because this is like a, in the eastern part of the country. Now, let, let me try to explain what uh, Mr. Nguida is saying. Uh, Zambia has, uh, has a lot of uh, culture and uh, a lot of traditions. So in the, in, in, in the West, there is, some, there is a culture which they call Kuomboka ceremony. So in the East, there is a culture that we call Nchuala ceremony, you see. So that is a, a, a traditional ceremony that brings all the people together of Zambia. So uh, what Mr. Nguida is saying, this is, this is news to me. What Mr. Nguida is saying is that uh, the, acting vice, the acting president of the Patriotic Front, which is the main opposition lead, uh, political party in the country, actually it is actually the former ruling party. Now they are in the opposition. So uh, they were ordered by state police to leave the traditional ceremony when the president... Mr. Haka in the Hichlema arrived for the traditional ceremony to meet the chiefs of the eastern part of the country. Now, uh, this is very unfortunate because these, uh, these uh, uh, ceremonies, they are meant to unite the people together. Yeah. You see, they are meant to unite the people together. I can give you, I can, let me try to break it down for our viewers here in the United States for them to understand what we are talking about. So, 
Zambia is like the eastern part of the country where we are talking about now. This is where I, I also come from. Uh, there's some tribes. Some tribes were divided into three when they were doing the petition of Africa. So let me give an example of the Chewa people. The, pe the Chewa people were divided into three. Some of the Chewa people are on the Mozambican side of the country. Some of them are on the uh, Malawian side of the country. And some of them are on the Zambian side of the country. But the main chief is like in the Zambian side. So it is, his name is Undi. You see? So, again, the Ngonis are the same. With the, some, of, some of the Ngonis are in Malawi, some of them are somewhere else, some, most of them are in Zambia. So there is a time when the tradition requires that they bring all the tribes people together. And that yeah. is one of those things. And the president of the republic may be invited also, even though he's not one of the tribes people, but because he's the head of state, he may be honored to be invited in that uh, occasion. So it is, a, it is an occasion that is meant to bring the people together. An example yes, in the United States, for our viewers in the United States to understand what we are talking about, this is like what you call, here in America, is called family reunion. Family reunion. They usually do it like on uh, Thanksgiving and other special occasions where the whole family, they will travel. And even the government has given like uh, some holidays. And the, when you add those holidays plus the weekend, it becomes like a four-day free time where families can travel all over the, the United States to go and meet their families. So it's called family union. They usually do it on Thanksgiving. They can do it on other special occasions. Yeah. So this is what we are talking about in Zambia, that when everybody is supposed to come together as one Zambia, one nation, we reconcile our differences and we put aside our political differences. We come together. This is the time when the opposition leaders in the country were ordered to leave the ceremony because the president, Mr. Haka in the Hichilema, uh, was arriving in the, in the ceremony. I, I don't know. That's strange to me. I'm over 50 years old. I have never heard something like this before. So it's my first time to hear it. I really have to absorb it before I make some comments. You know, this is strange. So let me bring in Mr. Chilekwa and uh, let him tell us what he's observing on the ground. Thank you, uh, moderator. Um, like uh, my colleague, uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, we need to understand uh, the genesis of this. You know, governance does not require amateurs, especially people that are devoid of understanding what democracy is. In 1991, we, we decided as a country to revert back to multipartism by the repeal of Article 4 in the then one party uh, participatory uh, uh, government under United Party for National Independence of the late uh, Kenneth, uh, Dr. Kenneth mm -hmm. David Gaunda. But there are very few current leaders that understand what democracy is. And to a certain point, I actually come to a belief to say either we are a misfit to democracy, or democracy is a misfit to us. Democracy means accepting our different views, but agreeing to do together amidst our uh, partisan differences or presidential differences. Now, you need to understand where we are with our new government under the United Party for, I mean, uh, United National, uh, UPND, uh, in short. 
Um, this is a party that has been in opposition for 23 years. And they are, for now, very excited with power. Um, in fact, it is not only this particular reference my cousin uh, Ngura has been uh, saying about the national assembly. They tend to have this propensity to think that now that they are in power, everything under the state government belongs to them. We have heard mm. sentiments from uh, ruling party stewards who believe that, uh, look, the mines, the positions in the mines belong to them, the contracts in the mines belong to them, the positions in government, they must enjoy them. So, in a nutshell, they are beginning to think, to say, that because they are in power, everything forgetting that they are only people that voted for them. Out of a population, I mean, we haven't done the, just the uh, uh, central statistics uh, uh, data, but I can safely say that around 18.5 million, if not 19.4, according to the uh, statistics. But they are only a small portion, 2.8 million that voted. And, and out yeah. of that 2.8, I mean, this is 1.8 million people voted for the former ruling. Okay, but Mr. Chilekwa, Mr. Mr. Chilekwa, let me cut you short a little bit. So I, I would like our viewers here in the United States to fully understand. What you are saying is that um, the country of Zambia has a population of about 19.4 million people. Close to that, yes. Okay, Th that, that's roughly it. that <laughs> amount of people, uh, around 19.4 million people, around there, that is the population of Zambia. And the people that voted for United Party for National Development are 2.8 million people. And the people that voted for the opposition party are 1.8 million people. So there was a difference of 1 million votes. But yes. even when you add 2.8 million people plus 1.8 million people, you are still far away from the whole population of Zambia, which is 19 point something million people, 19 plus some million people. So there are so many people in the majority which, which didn't even vote. This is what Mr. Chilekwa is saying. So now it looks like the, the 2.8 million people believe that everything in the country belongs to them because they were given the mandate by the 2.8 million people. So the contracts, the jobs, anything, business, anything belongs to the 2.8 million people because they were given the mandate, they are the majority of the people. But when you compare to the whole population, you find that they are still also in the minority, just like the 1.8 million people. So why can't these people live together? Why can't these people embrace the motto which was brought in by the founding father, who is Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, one Zambia, one nation. This is where the problem is, you see. Mr. Chirekwa, did I describe exactly what you were trying to say? That's exactly the real situation, and I appreciate uh, your summation there, but uh, it has the background, you see. This particular government uh, is doing what many African governments that come into power come to do. They come to outlaw literally everything that the previous government did. But apparently, this is a government which is full of speeches. They've got uh, literally in six months that they've been in power, they have literally negated everything where the former government left it. I'll give you an example. Uh, when they entered uh, into, in the run-up to this election, they said that uh, they are going to govern according to their, uh, to their manifesto. 
Now, in their manifesto was a tag called free education. Now, Dr. Kaunda at some point gave us free education. I'm a recipient of free education. Me too. From grade yeah. one up to, up, up, to, up to form five. Now, in that free education, we know that the manifesto was pirated from some Caribbean uh, uh, country there. Even the pictures, they know that. So, even their manifesto, they literally don't own everything in there. Maybe the thinking or the logic in that manifesto, they can't comprehend it. I'll give you instances. For instance, when they came into government, the first thing they tackled was the removal of the religious ministry. Now, the religious ministry, according to Zambia, a Christian nation, declared uh, somewhere in 1991 by the late uh, Second Republican President, Dr. Frederick Titus Jacob Chibua. This government has come to push it aside. Perhaps in similar manner that uh, uh, our uh, brothers and sisters in America do not seem to refer the Bible and things like that, but you have seen the consequences. Shootings in, in school, even you, you cannot imagine the age of people that are handling guns, even in America. Now, partly this is because the tradition that was set by the forefathers in that great nation of America is being done away with. In Zambia, we are beginning to go in that particular way. We value the ethos of Christianity. We value uh, togetherness. We value unity. And now there is a big talk because the first thing they had to deal with is to push away the Christian platform. There is no ministry like the former government uh, uh, did. So there's nothing sustaining Christianity in terms of government policy. If anything goes. Now, what has happened is that they are, they, they are about to put a law or to pass a law about polygamy. That is having more than one wife. Now, that may not be a problem, but there's also a discussion to say, oh, the females are discussing to say, if that becomes a, a situation, we, the women also, would like to have the right to have more husbands. Now, that issue is certainly going to lead us to issues of homosexuality. The former government, Dr. Edgar Chakwadung, rejected any aid from, uh, uh, from abroad based on these particular issues. And he said, if we have to stop, we have to stop. But we are not going to accept homosexuality because even dogs don't do that. And this government is coming on and beginning to change those things. So morality is literally about to leave our good nation because of government policy. Now, that may not be uh, su such an issue, but let me take you to the strength of this particular government. They said that, look, we are giving you a man who is an economist, the man who is a, a businessman, the man who is a farmer. That is what uh, they were telling the nation. And the nation rallied behind them to give them power. Now, the reality on the ground is this. I'm talking on top of my head. Recently, you know that energy is a very big driving factor in any economy. Energy. Now, this very well learned, perhaps Oxford University graduates, have come to increase connection fees, you know, when you want power at your place. There is what is called connection fee, and uh, currently there is a, a quasi-government institution called the Electric Supply Corporation, ZESCO, which manages these facilities, basically um, a, a, a monopolistic kind of arrangement that we have. The old rate used to be 1,000 700 Zambian quarter. The new rate is 6,995 quarter. An increase of 5,200. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Chilekwa. Mr. Chilekwa, sorry to cut you short, but I would like us to, to talk about those, uh, that energy problem Let's uh, have a discussion about that one next week, Saturday, so that uh, 
you'll be able to convert the amounts of money in Kwacha into US dollars so that other people can understand what you are talking about. Because if you say uh, 750 Kwacha increased from 750 Kwacha to, to about 6,000 Kwacha, uh, people may not understand what is that. So I would like you to convert those amounts in US dollars so that uh, we can talk about that next week and uh, next week Saturday so that you'll be mentioning those numbers in Kwacha and in Zambia too, in US dollars too, you know? So let me bring in uh, uh, Mr. Ngwira uh, to give us his views on this one and then we'll be able to close. Okay, uh, basically, uh, Mr. Piri, uh, the UPND government has, I think, you turned 180 degrees, uh, if I may put it that way, because the Zambian people, the young people out there, the youths, the unemployed teachers, doctors, had a lot of hope in them. But they have been, uh, I don't know the word that I can use, uh, they've been deliberately such a word regarding fulfilling the employment, regards fulfilling the lower cost of living, regards fulfilling uh, uh, sanitizing the police, uh, regards uh, uh, fulfilling the promise on uh, respecting people's choice, uh, regards polit political parties and all that. So I'm, I'm hoping to come to a time when we are going to, you know, get back to the drawing board and start asking them one by one to say, you did this, why are you not doing it? You said this, why are you not doing it? So in short, as things start now, we have basically put in place a government that has not fulfilled a single promise among the thousands and thousands of promises that they gave the Zambian people. So, and Mr. So Mr. Nguida, so Mr. Nguida, what you are saying is that uh, the promises when 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 we when we were going for the elections, the the campaigns were in the, the people were heated up in the campaigns. So there were so many promises that uh, this government promised to the people of Zambia that uh, when you elect us, this is what we are going to do, this is what we are going to give you, this is what we are going to do. So all those promises are now broken. Is that what you are saying, Mr. Nguila? Precisely, precisely. Because okay. if you promise to the Zambian people that the moment we form government, come January, when our budget is right, we are going to put 30,000 teachers. In January, you say no, we are actually uh, doing an audit uh, to know where uh, uh, the are. Uh, then we are going to uh, next month. Next month comes, so what we are doing is we are putting those that, um, have, that have obtained higher qualification. When comes come the vice president in office to say, well, the process is going, but we don't know exactly when we are going to employ this nation. That's totally a lie. And that's totally a diversion of, uh, uh, from what they promised the Zambian people. They promised the Zambian people that they're going to buy a bag of fertilizer at 250 kwacha, which is about uh, uh, roughly, uh, how can I put it, $10 per bag, somewhere there, uh, $10, uh, $7 uh, per bag. Uh, from the 500 uh, aquacha, which is about uh, you talk of, uh, uh, $20, 25 something there. So they have not done that because they are still buying fertilizer on the same price that the former government left. So where, where has it, you know, what has happened? And the president promised the Zambian people prior to his election to say he knows how to calculate issues of fuel. The prices of fuel are definitely going to crumble the moment. 
But as we speak, actually the price has gone up. And because of the Ukraine-Russia war right now, we are expecting another rise in fuel pricing. And so it's the government that we have you know, in this country. And it's unfortunate that Zambians can be deceived to such you know, levels. It's quite unfortunate. And I agree with my brother, Mr. Chief, that when you have got amateurs in government, then do not expect anything to happen, especially when it comes to finance. So in short, we are stuck as a nation. We don't know where we are going. We don't know what will happen to us. We really have a future under this government. It's point one. <laughs> okay, so this is what, uh, 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 let me try to see if I can summarize, uh, if I heard him correctly. This is what Mr. Nguira is saying. Mr. Nguira is saying that uh, uh, almost all the promises that the, this government of UPND, that is, really, that is now ruling Zambia, everything they promised has come out to be not what they are doing. This is what he's saying. And he Precisely. is also agreeing with the, our brother, Mr. Chilekwa, who comes from the northern part of Zambia. Mr. Nguira comes from the eastern part of Zambia. And um, this is what they are saying. They are saying that uh, uh, any, everything they promised the people that this is what they were going to do, this is what they were going to do, they have turned 100 80 degrees away from all those promises. So it's like the people are feeling disappointed. The people are feeling dissatisfied. The people are feeling betrayed by the government. Because what they told them they were going to do is different from what they are doing. You see? And so... They, we are all agreeing, the three of us, we are all agreeing that, you see, uh, when you put people in, in government positions which uh, they do not have experience about, it becomes a problem, you see? Because it's, this is like job on training, you see? Because the president, everybody knows, it's not like I'm backbiting him, no. I'm in front of three cameras. They are all in front of me. Uh, the president is a businessman. Actually, he's an economist who studied from the University of Zambia. And yeah. in, in 1991, he, was, uh, a, he did a lot of transactions on privatization of the country. So he's a business person. So he's coming from the business background into government. I don't know if he has held any political office or any office apart from the business world. I don't know no, he, anything of, like that. He has, you never, know? he has never been a councillor. He has yeah, never so been, we, been a person to his party. He has never been in any position apart from just uh, from being a businessman and over the UPA as president. But in terms of so, governance, he has never. Yeah. So, the president hasn't been, he hasn't held any political office in his life. He came from the business to the corporate world and he came over to take uh, over the, the leadership of the United Party for National Development, which is the UPND, and he, they are now uh, controlling the government. So the, the president has got no political experience, no public office experience, and uh, he's just running the country like a business, like, a, like the way anybody else would, would run their own business. That is what uh, our guests are saying in, not, in, in, a, in a nutshell. You know, that's what our guests are saying. So, uh, this is now... Uh, something for the Zambian people to think about. Next time, when you are electing a president, do you want somebody from the business world with no political or no public office experience to just come and become the president? 
Or do you want somebody who has served in this position and he has served as a branch chairman, as a youth chairman, as a national chairman, or as a minister of this portfolio or that portfolio? So all these things are now homework for the Zambian people to think about. Do you just want to bring somebody with no public office experience, or do you want to bring a businessman uh, who can uh, run the country like a business, or do you want somebody who, you see? So all these things are up to the Zambian people to begin to think through. Instead of uh, crying that we are being uh, disappointed, we are feeling uh, betrayed, we are feeling this or that, you know, this is something to think about. Next time when you are voting, ask questions. This is what I always say. Ask questions. If somebody tells you that they are going to reduce the price of gas from this amount to this amount, ask them, how are they going to do it? If somebody tells you that, oh, when I become president, I will put this plan to be collecting all your children from, from your house to the, to the school. Ask them, where is the plan going to land in the compounds? Where is the plan going to land in the suburbs? You know? How, so how yeah. are my children going to move from the house into the plan so that you can take them to school? Don't just believe everything. Ask questions. This is what I always say. Ask questions. I love the American voters. The American voters, if you promise them anything, they will ask you, where are you going to get the money to pay for that? Because they already know that if you can't explain where you're going to get the money to pay for what you're promising, it means that you're going to increase their taxes and they won't vote for you. They will accuse you of planning to increase taxes. You see, so Zambian people should learn from the American people. You see, this is why I love American politics. Even if, in America here, even if you are in opposition, you still have power. Have you seen? They can block some bills in the Senate, even though they are not the majority. Have you seen? This is how American politics goes. And I think Zambia, no matter what we want to believe or say, we still have, we have a long way to go. We need to learn from our people, from our American brothers and sisters who are in front of us. This is a fact. This is a fact. We, have, we just have to understand that. This is a fact. So let me just uh, conclude by saying that uh, uh, Mr. Nguira, uh, Mr. Chilekwa, uh, we need you next week so we can continue this discussion. We need you no next problem. week so that we can continue this discussion and many more that are coming. Uh, because of our time, we are going to cut off this uh, uh, broadcast. But uh, let's continue this next week because I would like us to talk about... Uh, the bill that has been presented into, the, into parliament, you know? Okay, so for our viewers here, I would say a bill has been present, presented in the Senate. You see, what we are calling parliament in Zambia, here is called Senate. So the bill has been presented to, to be debated that men should be marrying a lot of women. <sighs> <laughs> you see, men should be allowed to marry so many women, you know. And women are also asking, okay, so allow us also to marry so many men, you see. And I'm, I'm very surprised that the government can put such things as a priority 
when there are people that are suffering in Zambia, there are youths who have got no jobs. Instead of putting a youth empowerment as a priority, instead of putting other things as a priority, which can bring food into the stomach of people, and these are majority of these people are living below, below, below one dollar a day. And even that one dollar a day is taken away from them because they can't trade on the streets, they can't trade in different places. And then the government is faced with such problems. And instead of putting people's lives, people's livelihood as a priority, they are putting multiple women, marriage as a priority. And they table that bill in parliament. I would like us to talk about that next week, Mr. Nguira. So, Mr. Nguira, Mr. Chilekwa, please, Mr. Nguira, come and uh, give uh, your, fair, your closing remarks to the world. And after Mr. Nguira, we can have Mr. Chilekwa uh, give his closing remarks to the world. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Madam. Oh, your audio is gone. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, so I was saying I want to thank the, uh, the program coordinators, producers, and the directors of this program. Uh, do not meet here. Do not want us to discuss. And uh, on the business side, yes, just a very state. If you want to look at Zambia as a tourism destination, do not hesitate. Uh, we are here to assist you. Zambia has got the first of destinations. If you want animals, you want bait, you want whatever, we are here. Uh, I'm an expert in that. We, we are able to help you. So thank you very much. Uh, may God bless the United States of America. I think God bless the world. God bless Zambia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chilekwa. Thank you. <clears throat> um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Brother Coordinator, the, the producers, and the entire crew. Um, communicating to the world is not uh, one of the easiest aspects, but. Your audio. Uh, I would like to. Uh, I, the audio is not there? Yeah, a little bit higher. Uh, I don't know whether I can disturb this. Yeah, uh, this one is good. Uh, okay, I, I don't know about about the visual, but let's see what we can get out of this. Um, can you get me? Yes. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. I, I, I'm only appealing to the world that uh, Zambia is a big investment destination. Government cannot employ everybody, and in fact, it's just a portion. Uh, the biggest uh, uh, takers of, of uh, these issues is the, the private sector, and uh, those that are into real estate, um, uh, clean energy, uh, automobile engineering, and so forth. I think uh, Zambia is uh, open to business, and uh, that's the way we are going to improve the world. There is no government in the world that has ever made the lives of the people better than the private sector. And the SME uh, uh, platform is a huge stepping stone for everybody. And uh, Zambia doesn't have... Oh, sorry for that uh, of audio problems. And uh, so what uh, uh, Mr. Chilekwa and Mr. Nguida was saying is that uh, Zambia is a tourist uh, destination. So most, uh, uh, most tourists, we have so many tourists that are coming from Europe, the United States, and uh, Australia, and all those places. So if you are a tourist, you would like to visit Africa. Zambia is one of those countries that you can go to. You know, Let me just give credit to the president. I know I have criticized him so much. Uh, let, you, let me also give credit to the president. I... I am happy with the president when he increased the CDF. This CDF is the
Constitutional Const Constituency Development Fund. He has increased it from 1.6 million kwacha to 26 point uh, plus million kwacha. So he has done a good thing on the Constituency Development Fund. At least I have got something to appreciate the president for. Mr. Haka in the At least I have got one thing to appreciate him for. Despite all the other things that everybody else, including me, are complaining. But at least he has done one thing that we can say thank you. He has increased the constituency development fund to from 1.6 to 26 point plus million kwacha. So that is a good thing that the president has done. Now. Hear me well and hear me good. Uh, I am not a negative person. I am not against the president 100%. I'm just against, I'm just not happy when he's not doing the right thing. Because I would like him to do what the Zambian people expect him to do. I mean, they, they gave him that job. They employed him. They knew that he was a businessman. They knew that he, wasn't, he didn't hold any public office before. So they knew all that, yet... They entrusted power in him. So the fact that they entrusted power in him, uh, I would like to work with him. <laughs> when he's, he has done the right thing, I will be the first one to appreciate him here on the, on the cameras. When he has done something not what we are expecting, I will be the first one to also criticize him. You know, this is a democracy. Everybody is free to express their opinions. And this is uh, what we are saying. So please, don't misunderstand me. I love the president. And uh, I would like him to save the people of Zambia. If he's going to do anything good, I'll be the first one to announce it. Like, like what I just said before, CDF funds. Now, CDF funds, some, some, some of our viewers may not understand what that means. Uh, CDF means, it's, here in America, you would compare it with where the federal government is now giving money to the states. Because the federal government cannot do all the small details in a particular state. So they would entrust a big amount of money to the state so that the state now can now break it down to the people. So what that is here in America is what we call CDF in Zambia, where the central government, we call it the central government. Here they call it the federal government. You see? Where the federal government would, would apportion a certain amount of money to different states to be used in the local particular uh, state. So that is called CDF in Zambia, where the central government is going to entrust big amounts of money to local governments to break it down to the people. So I'm happy with what he did, because he increased that amount of money from 1.6 to 26 point something million kwacha, which is very good. I'm happy with that, you know? And I will not hesitate to say I'm happy when I'm happy, because even my face will show that I'm happy, you see? So thank you very much, our viewers here in the United States and parts of the world. Uh, we have come to the close of our program and we'll be here next week to continue our discussion. If you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much. God bless Zambia. God bless the United States. And God bless the world and all of us. Thank you.